It's been on my mind. At this time, during isolation, lots of people will have the question in their heads, are we really alone? I don't usually feel alone, life's so fast, within the normal pace of every day, and the rush, we don't have time to think about it, the kids need something, work needs something, the ironing's piling up. You're distracted, pulled from pillar to post, but what is the meaning of it all? What's the purpose? What's the meaning of life? Where do we go to find hope? We're all searching for something, especially at the minute. We're all craving some sort of community. Alpha is a space for authentic, unforced community, an adventure. It's a journey of discovery, an opportunity to explore. Even if you don't typically go to church, Alpha offers a relaxed and fun environment to ask tough questions openly without judgment. With Alpha Online, you can relax in the comfort of your own home, listen to a talk which poses core questions to inspire a conversation. We'll look at questions around who is Jesus? Why do Christians pray? We would love you to join us at Alpha Online, launching at the beginning of May, Monday nights at 8pm. Registration is open now through our website. It's been on my mind. At this time, during isolation, lots of people will have the question in their heads, 
are we really alone? I don't usually feel alone, life's so fast, within the normal pace of every day and the rush, we don't have time to think about it, the kids need something, work needs something, the ironing's piling up. You're distracted, pulled from pillar to post, but what is the meaning of it all? What's the purpose? What's the meaning of life? Where do we go to find hope? We're all searching for something, especially at the minute. We're all craving some sort of community. Alpha is a space for authentic, unforced community, an adventure. It's a journey of discovery, an opportunity to explore. Even if you don't typically go to church, Alpha offers a relaxed and fun environment to ask tough questions openly without judgment. With Alpha Online, you can relax in the comfort of your own home, listen to a talk which poses core questions to inspire a conversation. We'll look at questions around who is Jesus? Why do Christians pray? We would love you to join us at Alpha Online, launching at the beginning of May, Monday nights at 8pm. Registration is open now through our website. Well, good morning, everyone, to our live stream service. We are live here from the Manse uh, here in Downstair in Carrickfergus. Uh, my name's Nathan. I'm the minister here. And let me welcome you. If you're a member of our congregation or if you're watching and tuning in, let me welcome you. Um, this is not the ideal way that we love to meet. We, we wish that we were together, but we're so glad that we can still meet together in our own homes and so we trust that this service will be a time of blessing for you and your families. We have um, a packed time today. We um, will be looking at God's word in our second part on fasting and how we respond in the current season. Um, we will be having Hannah Crockard on video and she'll be doing, a, she's done a talk for our kids. So kids, um, pay attention to that. We have Adam and Christine leading our praise again. And so we're super excited by what God is going to do and talk to us. We come here to worship him. Um, we have a couple of announcements. Just firstly, um, we're so excited about our Alpha um, online. Alpha Online is going to be starting not tomorrow but the week after, the beginning of May. Uh, we've already got a number signed up but we would love even more. And this is where you come in because very often Alpha um, is about telling someone that you know about whether they'd be interested in inviting someone. And so we would love for you to be part of this journey by inviting people in. Um, the sign-up sheet is on our website. You can find out all the details on the Facebook page. The video has just been playing and will be playing after the service. But what better time to find Jesus than now? In this season of uncertainty, of loneliness, of lockdown, Jesus' truth is more important now more than ever. And so the right time is now. It's a chance to ask questions and to investigate about who Jesus is and the hope that he offers. So what, what better way than to engage through our Alpha course? So please do take that upon yourself. Invite someone you know who might really benefit from being able to ask questions in a relaxed atmosphere from the comfort of their, of their sofa. It's a great chance and a great opportunity. Boys and girls, um, you'll know what this is. This is our very special phone. The number is on our Facebook page where you can get in touch with me. And today I want two things from you. First of all, I want you to tell me something fun that you've been doing in the sun. So fun in the sun, something you've been doing outside or that you've been playing or anything like that. Maybe you've got a pool up or something like that. Tell me, make me jealous at the end of the service through this. And then the second thing that we were doing is we're thanking a different group of people who are serving us at this moment. So we thank doctors, we thank those who worked in shops, and today we're going to thank those who work on behalf of the council. And when we talk about them, we're talking about people who collect our bins, people who work in recycling centres, people who sort our recycling, people who um, work in cemeteries, 
and all those who are helping the council at this time. We want to really thank them. Um, so uh, those are the two things, fun in the sun and then um, uh, a thank you to those who are working on behalf of council. So please do text in. But we come to worship this morning and Psalm 9 opens our, our worship. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So we're going to go now to Adam and Christine and they're going to lead us in our praise.
we're so grateful to Adam and Christine for leading us in our worship. And they're going to be singing again at the end of our time. If you've just joined with us during the singing, let me welcome you again. Uh, boys and girls, um, please do send me a text. Um, also, if it's been your birthday in the past week, I want to hear about it so we can wish you a happy birthday. The two things we're looking for, something fun you've done in the sun this week. And two, um, a big thank you to all who work on behalf of the council, people who, who collect our bins, sort our recycling, people who, who um, are working um, in cemeteries, and all of the people who work on behalf of our council at the moment to make sure that we have all the amenities that we need, etc., etc. So give us, get, uh, make sure you put a wee thank you in there as well. So follow the sun and a thank you. Brilliant. But we're going to come now just before our kids talk and we're going to pray together. Let's pray. Father God, we pray to you. We want to focus our minds on you because you are worthy. Worthy of our undivided focus. Worthy of our worship. And we confess that many times, even in the past week, we have... Um, worshipped other things. We have focused too much on other things other than you. We confess that we've made mistakes. Some mistakes that we've made many times before. So we need your forgiveness and we need your healing and we need to come again to worship. The word repent means to turn around. And that's what we need to do very often, Lord. We need to turn around and to face you again and to worship you again. So we want to do that today, knowing that because you died on the cross and rose again, that you have power over sin and death and you have forgiven us for our mistakes and our brokenness and our sin. And so we thank you for that. Lord, you are so good to us. We thank you for homes to live in. We thank you for all the goodness that you give to us. But Lord, we also know that we're in a difficult season at the moment where disease is ravaging through our world. Lord, it's on the news. It's everywhere around us. It's on every Facebook post. We, we are surrounded by it, it feels. And it can be easy to lose hope. But you, Lord, are in control. You are the King of Kings. Nothing happens that surprises you. You're not watching this like a show on TV, wondering what will happen next. You are the King of Kings. And we know that you will use this, Lord, to bless us, to teach us things about you and your will and your kingdom. But Lord, we do, we pray for healing. We pray for an end to lockdown. We pray because as kids before their father, it's all we know. And we pray, Lord, that we would trust you even in the heart of difficult seasons. Lord, we thank you for all those who work on behalf of the council, for those who collect our rubbish, for those who sort it, for those who make decisions about those things, for those who work in cemeteries, for those who open graves and dig and all of those things, Lord, at difficult times we pray for them, that they might know how much we appreciate them and are so proud of them. And we thank you, Lord, for all of this. Be in our service and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now Hannah is going to come um, and she's going to talk to the boys and the girls. Hi kids, so Nathan has asked me to do the, the kids address this week. Um, I was really excited because I really am missing getting to chat to you and hearing all your really interesting and sometimes quite difficult to answer questions. Um, so I'm just going to share a couple of thoughts with you for this week. So obviously the world is constantly changing. Um, the examples are, uh, you know, at the minute with music and watching films, we wouldn't really be maybe picking up CDs or DVDs. We, we now can say, Alexa, play my favorite song, or we can go on to Sky, or we can go on to Alexa Netflix, 
and watch films. So things in the world are constantly changing. And obviously at the minute, with everything that's going on, things can maybe feel a wee bit unsure and we can maybe feel a little bit worried. And you've probably been told quite a bit recently that we need to wash our hands. And I saw a little demonstration and I thought it was quite good to explain why we need to wash our hands. So as you can see here, I've got a little bowl of water. And I'm going to put some pepper into my water, okay? And the pepper is going to represent all the germs, okay? Now, as you can see, there's lots of germs all going about here. Now, whenever I put soup onto my hands, which is what we're being asked to do, and I put the soup into the water, you can see all the germs move round to the outside, okay? Now this, this reminded me of something else, okay? This reminded me of the fact that whenever we ask Jesus into our lives to become our friend, he comes into our life and he changes our heart, okay? Whenever we ask him to forgive our sins, he completely cleans our heart and takes away all the bad things we've done. And we just have to ask him to do that. That's pretty amazing. And the thing is, my soap here, it says it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. But the amazing thing is, Jesus takes away 100% of our sins. He takes away every single last bad thing we've done. He just wipes it, our slate clean and we can start again anew in him. Okay, so that's pretty amazing. And the thing is, because we, if we ask Jesus into our lives, he can be our sure thing in these unsure times, okay? The Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, okay? So if you're looking for something that's definite, if you're looking for something that's sure in these strange times, we know that we have Jesus, okay? We can fix our eyes on him. And ways to do this is we can pray to him, we can tell him what's on our mind because Jesus loves to hear what we've got on our head, okay? He loves to hear what we have to say to him. And even though he already knows all the thoughts in our heads, he still loves for us to chat to him, okay? And we can read our Bible and we can also praise him, okay? I'm loving all the, the praise songs that are going up on the Facebook page at the minute. So if you ever want to hear a little song, you can maybe go onto YouTube, ask your parents to to look up some of the, the kids' praise songs or go onto the Facebook page and have a wee look. There's some great songs on there. And just remember that Jesus is always there for us, okay? He will never leave us and he'll never forget about us. If you ask him to be your friend, he can be your sure thing. Thanks. Thanks, Hannah, for that. Boys and girls, hope that you enjoyed that. And again, we're looking for a text message, fun in the sun, and a thank you to those who worked on behalf of the council. But we're going to turn to the word now. Um, we're in our second part on fasting. We're in Isaiah chapter 58 um, this morning in the Old Testament. Isaiah, one of the main, the major prophets. And uh, we started our, our topic of fasting last week. And a number of people have been in contact with me. Some have been fasting and they've been loving the effect that it's had um, on their week. Other people have been struggling a bit with it and wondering how it fits into their rhythm of Christian life. And, and I, I feel like it's been such an important topic for us as a church to look at. Um, but let me just sort of re remind you, maybe you, you haven't seen our last um, service, we would encourage you to go and check it out. But a wee recap um, just on, on it. First of all, this is not something that I'm an expert in or is a normal part of my life. This is something that just like you, I'm learning about, that I've been studying for the past two weeks. I've been diving into what the Word says. We want to be guided by the Bible and not by anything else, not by tradition or anything like that. We want to be guided by what the Bible says. But we know that fasting normally is to do with food. But we understand that there will be situations and circumstances where fasting from food is not advisable and actually is not to be encouraged. 
for instance, with a medical condition or whenever you need the nutrients or something like that. And so just like Martin uh, Lloyd-Jones would say, he would encourage us that, um, that other things that we depend on that are vital for us. And there's a reason for that is because for food, for example, whenever we give up food, food is what we need for life. And so therefore, whenever we fast from food, we are truly proclaiming that Jesus is the bread of life. And we are depending on him, not for temporary life that food gives, but for that deep spiritual life that he brings. We looked at how fasting is a response. It's not just something that we do to get something. It's a response. It's a response to brokenness in ourselves. It's a response to a spiritual moment that the Lord gives. Oh, and then thirdly, it is a response to calamity in the world around us, something that is particularly relevant at this current time. Fasting is prevalent in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament, and also we know from early writings that it was a big part of the early church, and right up until really about a hundred years ago in the West, fasting was a normal part of a Christian journey. So today we're going to be doing our second part in fasting, and we're going to be looking at what the Bible says about it. And so we're going to turn to one of the most iconic passages on fasting, and that's in Isaiah 58. And Isaiah 58 has a lot to say about fasting and what it is about. So we're going to read the first three verses, dive into God's word and see what God is saying about this topic. This is the word of God. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God. They ask me for just decisions and they seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? So we're going to stop there at verse 3, just halfway through. And we're going to look uh, just at the beginning of what true fasting is all about. So here we have a situation. We have a bunch of people who are fasting. But you'll notice that already they fall in foul of one of the key facets in that they are results focused. They're not, they're, they're fasting and in verse 3 they say, well, why have we done it? Why have we fasted and you haven't seen it? Why have we fasted and you haven't noticed? And what they're really saying is they want something from God so they fasted. They're all about the result and that's hunger strike, it's not fasting. They're not doing it in response to something as we're going to find out, but instead they're doing it because they want something from God. So what do we learn here then about true fasting is that something else deeper is going on. In verse, in verse 2, God says that day after day you're seeking me. Day after day you're fasting, you're praying. But you're praying and fasting as if something in your life is not seriously wrong. You're being a hypocrite in that you're fasting and you're acting like a super spiritual person. But deep inside, there are broken, sinful patterns, and these two things don't match up. We've all met people who are sweetness and light, but then we, we find out something about them. Or we've, they're sweetness and light to your face, but behind your back, they're stabbing you, or something like this. We've, we've met when people who appear to be one way are actually another way. This is, not, this is the, the opposite of integrity. And, and, and what God is saying is that there's absolutely no point in fasting whenever you don't have the foundation of a repentant life. The foundation of good fasting is a repentant life that looks at yourself and says, you know what, there are broken sinful patterns in me. And in order to fast, I need to ask for forgiveness. I need to come before the cross. I need to come before Jesus. And I need to, I need to, to, to ask for forgiveness. I need to repent of this. And so repentance is the background and the foundation for fasting. There is no point in fasting and still continuing in broken lifestyles. 
There's no point in fasting and then sinning at the same time. There's no point in, in doing that. It just doesn't match up. And we know that whenever we say it. But very often we engage in acts of worship on a Sunday morning. And then Monday it's back to, back to life as normal. The Sunday worship has to match the Monday reality. The fasting spirit has to represent then the repentant life that we do. So let's move on. We, we know that repentance has to be our foundation, but let's move on. Halfway through verse 3. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. You exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for buying one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? And then we're going to go on in verse 6 to what true fasting is like. But in these couple of verses... Um, God's saying something very specific. He's saying that the rhythm of fasting must match the rhythm of your life. The routine of fasting, the emphasis behind fasting, the motivation for fasting on a Sunday must match the motivation, rhythm and orientation of your life on a Monday morning. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually quite, quite ironic. Is that in verse 4, um, in verse 3 it says you're fasting, but you exploit those who you work for. So you're being humble before God, but then you're going in and you can't work with these people. You're exploiting them. In verse 4, he says, you're fasting before God. You're worshipping God. And then you're starting to quarrel with people. You're starting to fight with people. So you're praising the God of peace. You're fasting to Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. And then you're going in and are you peaceful? No, you're full of quarreling. You're full of angst and strife. And, in, and actually, it says that they get in fist fights. In verse 4, I mean, if you're fasting and fist fighting, something's not going right there, okay? And I don't know if this needs to be, to be evident, but if you're getting in fist fights while you're fasting, you're probably not doing it right. You can quote me on that, okay? Verse 4, and so God says, pretty obviously, you can't do that. You can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard. You know, this, 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 this isn't going to work. He goes on in verse 5 to say, this is not a temporary thing. It's not a one-off thing. It's not like you fast a day and then all of a sudden things are going to be special. No, it's a fasting. Is this microcosm. It's like a small picture of the way that your entire life is meant to be. The self-sacrifice, the humility, the humbling of yourself before God in worship is meant to be a small picture of the way the rest of your life is. There is no point in coming before God and fasting on a Sunday morning or whenever you do it and then coming back to the normal ways of life on a Monday. Fasting is a picture of what it is, uh, of what a life is like who lives Jesus, like Jesus. The passage is actually going to get even more ludicrous because in verse 10, we're going to skip forward a wee bit. In verse 10, it says, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. So really what God is saying is that one of the things he's accusing people of is not feeding the hungry. So can you understand that the absolute irony and ludicrousness of this is that you're fasting from food, you're giving up food, but yet you, you, you won't feed the hungry. You're giving up something that someone else could really use, and yet this, these two things don't go together. Fasting is meant to, to mimic the rhythm of our lives, the humility, the sacrifice, the love of Jesus, the obedience, the worshipfulness of it. It's meant to point us to Jesus and then it is meant to infiltrate through the rest of our lives. We don't want to be hypocrites. We don't want to put on masks that just mimic. We don't want to have our church mask, our fasting mask. These are things that are meant to be acts of worship that fit into the rhythm of our lives. And don't worry if fasting is not part of the rhythm of your life yet. 
But we want to encourage you that this might be a time to start thinking about it. This might be a time to start small. Maybe it'll be a meal or something else that you depend on um, that, that you might give up. But again, it's not like what you get for it. So for instance, it's not about giving up chocolate because there is a caveat to that. You give up chocolate, you'll get something for yourself. That's results focused. But we give up food because there's nothing to gain. There's nothing to gain but worship. There's nothing to gain. There will be blessing, but there is nothing to gain other than worshiping Jesus. So we have, we have these two things. We have a foundation of repentance that goes with fasting. Then we have how fasting is in itself not that special, but it is a rhythm of life. Fasting represents the rhythm of life. There's no point in fasting if we don't have the rhythm of the Christian journey down. But how then should we fast? How then should this rhythm look? Verse 6. Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry? And to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see the naked to clothe him. And not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Um, and then your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of God will be your right hand. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say here am I. So what does the rhythm of life look like whenever fasting is part of that rhythm? This is the kind of fasting. It's the loosening the chains of injustice. Do you see injustice around you? Then seek to loose it. Do you see people who are oppressed, who are yoked, who are heavy burdened with sin and shame? Then use this fasting to point them to Jesus. Do you see people who are hungry, who are homeless? Do you know people who are in need? And at this time in our community, this, this is more relevant now more than ever. Does someone need to, you to go to the pharmacist to pick up a subscription? Does someone need shopping brought to them? Does someone need an encouraging word? Is there an elderly person who's alone near you that you can just wave through a window? This is the kind of life that rhythms with fasting that mimics this life of fasting. This is what God desires. Not empty acts of worship, but acts of worship that provoke us to follow Jesus and to serve him. So this is the rhythm of life. We've got the foundation of repentance. We've got a rhythm of life that matches fasting as an act of worship. That the fact that Monday to Friday to Saturday is going to match the worship that we do on Sunday. But what is the result? The result is beautiful. The result is light and glory. Okay, verse 8. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. He goes on um, in, verse, uh, uh, in verse 10. And he says, then your light will rise in the darkness. And your night will become like the noonday. What is it that we're trying to be at the moment? We're trying to be salt, but we're trying to be light. How does, how does Isaiah tell us to do that? It is by fasting and living a life that rhythms fasting, that moves it. That's not a word, but you understand. That moves with fasting. It is a life that worships God through fasting, through prayer, through worship. And then it is a life that lives Monday to Saturday like the reality of what Sunday teaches. That is the beauty. Then light will break forth. Not, not just light, but glory. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. The glory of the Lord will surround you. There will be glory in this. There will be healing. Verse, um, uh, da, 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 verse uh, 8 says, your healing will quickly appear. We don't do it for the result. We do it to respond to things that have happened. We do it because we want to worship God. But what will be the result of this true fasting is there will be light. There will be glory. There will be healing. Um, what else is that there will be 
a building of a garden in a scorched land in verse 11. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. You will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden. Maybe today you feel dry, withered, alone. Maybe you feel like a wilderness. There's tumbleweed rolling through your life. Let me encourage you to engage in these acts of worship. Maybe you need to come back to the Lord and maybe fasting is something that you might consider. The result of this fasting and a life lived that mirrors it is a life like a well-watered garden. A land that is changed from a sun-scorched desert into a lush, uh, just amazing garden. It's, It's incredible. But it doesn't stop there. Verse Verse 12 you will, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. One of the things I love is that in this verse, it's like the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah starts in chapter 1 with, with a broken city, a literal broken city, broken walls. And what does he do? He fasts and he prays. How does Nehemiah end? It ends with the walls of the city being rebuilt. But it starts with a journey of fasting and a journey of prayer. Are your walls broken? Do you feel like a ruined city? Are you looking around and seeing ruins wherever you go? Maybe it's a, it's, it's, it's a ruin in another person. Maybe it's a broken city somewhere else. And you think, I need to build those walls. First, come to the Lord because he will build them. He will build them when we fast when we pray, when we worship, when we live a life that honors God and comes before him. That the ruins, you will be called repairer of broken walls, verse 12, restorer of streets and dwellings. And then verse 14, what will be the end result? You will find joy in the Lord. You will find joy. And not only that, you will feast. Verse 14, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. Fasting is not the be all and end all. It is just a part of the worshiping life of a Christian. Prayer, worship and fasting, they all go hand in hand. And maybe like me, you've felt convicted by this, that this is an appropriate response to the season that we're in, fasting. But we don't do it permanently. We don't do it with, with, with no end in sight. But we know that one day we will feast. We know that one day we will feast again. We know that one day we will be together again and feast. But ultimately, I will feast on my whenever my inheritance comes in. The inheritance of eternal life. That one day we will feast with Jesus. And that is a reality that I am so incredibly excited for. So fasting, a repentant foundation. Fasting as an act of worship that is meant to mirror our lives. And finally, what does it bring? Light, healing, glory, joy, feasting. That's what worshiping God is all about. Brilliant. Let's pray together. Father God, we pray that we would engage with you in these worshipful ways. We know, Lord, that fasting is not this thing to be glorified beyond anything, but instead it is just a part of a worshipping arsenal, Lord, alongside prayer and humility and repentance and all of these things, Lord. But we pray that fasting might become more and more part of our journeys, Lord, and that we might engage in these ways that please you. Give us spirits of integrity, Lord, that we wouldn't just worship you with our minds on a Sunday and then go right back to normal on a Monday, but that our entire lives would be ones of worship. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. 
If you do have any questions about fasting, please do get in contact with me. I would love to talk to you about it. We can have a coffee in our own homes and we can chat over the, over the phone. If there's something that troubles you or you just want to talk about something, please do give me a phone call and I'd love to talk to you about that. Brilliant. But now we have our final item of praise from, from Chrissy and Adam. Let's praise God together. Okay, so now we're going to um, do our, our, our phone messages. So let me just read these out. We've got a, quite a few today. Um, I have been doing scavenger hunts and picking dandelions for my rabbit, Norman. They are his favorite treat. Wow. My family and I would like to thank the bin men for taking away our rubbish this week. Um, uh, we are going to draw a thank you picture and stick in our bin to Alice Robinson. Brilliant. Awesome. Thank you to all the council members who work hard times and what they provide for us. Violet wants to wish Mummy a happy birthday that she celebrated on Wednesday past. We had some fun in the sun yesterday in the paddling pool with ice lollies. Happy birthday, Rachel. Um, brilliant. Uh, Eli and Aaron have been having fun in the sun. They made an assault course in the back garden. Wow. Walked along the shore near their house, played on swings and trampoline, and played with Eli's new drone. Oh, my goodness. 
he got it for his 11th birthday on Friday. Here, fly it over, Eli. Um, we thank God for all the people who work in our councils. Thank you um, for those who empty our bins every week. We would be lost without them. Absolutely. Hi, Nathan. We love having fun in the sun, playing in the paddling pool. Oh, my goodness. I'm so jealous. Um, and eating a barbecue. I've been eating some barbecue. Yep. We cycle around the house lots of times um, on our bikes. Thank you to all the council workers for still going out and doing their jobs and helping us stay safe. From Joe and Bradley. Brilliant, lads. Morning, Nathan. We love your new hair. Well, thank you. <laughs> we love playing with chalk on our garden and new chalkboards. We thank the recycle men for uh, collecting our rubbish. Great job. Don't know who that's from, but it um, uh, might be the Towers. Um, it was Daddy's birthday on Friday. We built a monkey bar on top of the swing. We also cleaned up our playhouse in the garden and turned it into a cafe. Oh, wow. From Eva and Karen Storman. Brilliant, guys. Amazing. Hi, Nathan Ashley. We like your new hair and beard, Nathan. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we have had two barbecues, gone on the trampoline, played football, and played um, in the paddling pool. Oh, goodness. Um, Mummy and Daddy, Daddy smashed down the wall in our garden with a sledgehammer. Okay. Big thank you to Daddy's Uncle Bruce and Cousin Darren, who work for the council, doing a great job. Awesome. Morning, Nathan. It's Maddie and Willow. Hey, guys. We have been running through the sprinkler in our garden and Manny's daddy has been teaching her to ride her bike too. We are thankful for the bin men who take away all our rubbish. Can you say happy birthday to Willow who was two yesterday? A big two happy birthday, Willow. Morning, Nathan. We've been, uh, okay, no, just read that. Hi, Nathan. Sarah and Adam have been playing on the trampoline uh, in the garden and would like to thank all the workers taking away our rubbish to help keep our homes clean and tidy. Absolutely. We've been enjoying cycles in the sunshine, playing different board games in the garden. Thank you to all our council workers for the great work you're doing, Mia and Bobby. Hi, Nathan. Something fun in the sun is I'm having barbecues with my family. I thank all the workers um, during the coronavirus from Anna Devaney. Brilliant, Anna. Um, we've been having barbecues in the sun and learning to ride my pedal bike. Lots of bike riding going on. This is awesome. Thank you to all who work in cemeteries looking after them. And now we can go to visit our sister's grave again. Oh, that's brilliant. Hope and faith, Garrett. Um, Maddie has been practicing tumbles in her gymnastics mat. Lexi is loving going down her slide into the paddling pool. So many paddling pools about. Brilliant. We have had the swimming pool out. Elijah is training and saving lots of goals with Daddy. Yeah, we've seen some videos. Thank you to everyone who helps our time. Brilliant. We have made a play structure and we have been playing in it and we thank Ben Men for taking the trash. And that's from the Eng family. Brilliant, guys. Hi, Nathan. Something fun in the sun. I have done is riding my bike around my neighborhood. Thank you to all of your workers, all of the workers from Emily Devaney. Awesome. A couple more. A big thank you to our daughter and son in law, Louise and Le Louise and Leighton Robinson, radiographers working on the front line, and also to those from church who helped during their recent flood disaster and those looking after granddaughter and Alice. And that's Stephen and Christine McGee from First Banger. We'll not tell them, don't worry. Um, but watching your Facebook stream, good guys. Yes, absolutely. A big, a big shout out to those guys. Um, we're so glad that they got sorted. Um, the, the message about Daddy's Uncle Bruce was from the McAllisters. Oops. Okay, so we got confirmation from that. Brilliant. Um, loved your text messages. Um, get them in next week and tune in next week for our next live stream. Um, just a reminder, Alpha starting, please do. If there's someone you know that could use it, um, point them to our website. All the details are there. We'd love to see more people signed up to find hope in Jesus. But let me wish you, uh, hope that you have a great week and hope that you have uh, a real encounter with the Lord Jesus. Okay, see you later. It's been on my mind. At this time, during isolation, lots of people will have the question in their heads, are we really alone? I don't usually feel alone. Life's so fast, within the normal pace of every day, and the rush, we don't have time to think about it. The kids need something, work needs something, the earnings piling up. You're distracted, pulled from pillar to post. But what is the meaning of it all? What's the purpose? What's the meaning of life? Where do we go to find hope? We're all searching for something, especially at the minute. 
we're all craving some sort of community. Alpha is a space for authentic, unforced community, an adventure, it's a journey of discovery, an opportunity to explore. Even if you don't typically go to church, Alpha offers a relaxed and fun environment to ask tough questions openly without judgment. With Alpha Online, you can relax in the comfort of your own home, listen to a talk which poses core questions to inspire a conversation. We'll look at questions around who is Jesus? Why do Christians pray? We would love you to join us at Alpha Online, launching at the beginning of May, Monday nights at 8pm. Registration is open now through our website.